as it is a new product, I wanted to give you a proper good look around before I start testing. So one of the things I did notice, which seems a lot more visible than normal, is the fact that it lists all of the Ryzen's. Uh, and I think that's because we know that there are going to be 6000 series and this is obviously going to be like maybe one of the last ones. But obviously it's a really good thing that we're seeing finally an extreme for AMD. We've been screaming about it for so long. And I've just seen that you can't even see the bit that I was on about, which is there. And it's the first time I've personally seen Windows 11 ready on a motherboard box. Round the back, it does say about robust power solution. Now I happen to know that there are 18 90 amp power stages with microfine chokes and 10K capacitors. It's a fairly standard thing for Asus at the moment. It doesn't say anything about doublers in the information that I've been given so far. So I'm going to assume that it's parallel wired like it has been with some of their uh, other products recently. And if you can hear me moving around in the background, it is because I'm trying to find my scissors because this book, book board is so new. I haven't even had a look myself yet. And I kind of like going into these as a full blown noob so that we can have a look and get surprised about stuff together. Oh, it's not got one of the pull down bits at the front. I used to like those boxes. Right, so we have got the board, but what I want to do is have a good look. It would have ha been handy if I'd done that to start off with everything inside the box. Now this looks like lots of screws and stuff. So it's all your M.2 screws. There's a little sticky pad there. And the only other thing in there, unsurprisingly, that I found is a ROG badge. There's literally nothing else in there at all. Very, very light. Let's go for the other small one. This is down the front. Ah, okay, so this is a Wi-Fi antenna. Now I happen to know that this is a Wi-Fi 6E compatible, which is six gigahertz. Now, obviously you would need a router to be able to make the most of that. It's not technically out in the UK yet either, but I know it is coming. It's been released by Ofcom and stuff. It's already out in the US on this side. Okay, so then we have, and this is USB-C, and it's a little DAC that you can get. Uh, what's it say down the side? PCMB or mobile, okay. PCNB, so PC notebook or mobile, so that's pretty cool. Then, oh, you get the ROG screwdriver. You get the M.2 expander. This looks like a memory module, but you can actually bolt two M.2s to it. There's an extra slot up near the um, uh, RAM slots that you can plug it into. And this is a fan and RGB uh, hub. So it plugs in via USB, and then it gives you loads of fan hubs and RGB ports that you can control from within the Acer software. Now, is there anything underneath? Oh, crikey. There's actually like a whole other layer. It's going to be like the biscuits that you get at Christmas. Um, okay, so this, oh, this is just going to be manuals and stuff. I can feel this already. Yeah, manuals. Is there a driver CD? Nope, you can tell because I'm bending it. So that means there's a USB in here somewhere as well. I am trying to whiz through as quickly as I can because I now know we have a whole other layer. Now, this obviously, I haven't been given official pricing yet and the board is still uber new. So, oh God, it's actually... Uh, right, okay, they've made life difficult, okay? Right, so I'm gonna have to do it this way because there's so much to uh, have a look at. So it's kind of like got whole other separate layers underneath. So in this bit, you get your ROG key ring. Now this is a, a, an RGB splitter. So it's an addressable RGB splitter, which is kind of funky that they've given you this when you've got that hub, but you've got it anyway. Then there are, these are all braided SATA cables. They're not normal ones. They're all black braided SATA cables. This is, yeah, look, USB with utilities. It's so nice that we're starting to see these. 
Just remember, as a point of uh, topic, if you're watching this and you've ended up buying one of these, the uh, USB utilities and the drivers, if you go back to them later, will be out of date. So it's a fairly good idea every now and then to update them with the most recent ones, as you would do with like the Windows install, because then it saves it doing automatic updates and stuff. And then this is a magnetic graphics card support. Okay, so that's that level. I remember seeing something over here. There's another level, right, okay. See what I mean, there's loads. Uh, this is that, oh, okay, right. So this is a six pin to uh, another six pin. And I believe this is a PCI Express six pin rather than a SATA. But I believe this is what powers the um, hub that I spoke to you about before. And with all due respect, Asus, those condiment cables, just not cricket. It's making me scream my face up. I don't like that. Uh, and then we've got some more um, adapters for RGB. You've also got some fan adapters as well. These are like one to three PWM fan out cables, which is really nice. I actually like keep these just in stock. Uh, so it's nice that they come with it. It does give you options and I don't know why more people don't use them. This is another RGB extender and then you get a whole packet there's one, two, three, oh, less than you'd think. These are thermal probes to put out. And then this actually looks like, ah, these are the stickers to hold your uh, hub down that I spoke to you about. So the pack is actually fairly feature packed. I don't think we had any extra layers that I've missed, but there we go. They certainly crammed all of that in there. Okay, on to the board itself. One of the things I will say to you right now, while I move the tripod like an uber professional, is this thing weighs an absolute ton. When I went to pick it up, I was massively, massively surprised about the weight of it. And now I've had a look, flip, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not a weak person, but you can certainly feel the weight. Look at how thick those heat sinks are up on the VRM. It's humongous, and there's a lot of it down here as well. Like an awful lot of it down here. This part of it, you know, not so much. That's plastic up the side, but that VRM area and the IO, that is pretty much where all the weight is. There is a massive back plate as well, but you can see the power area. So there are 18 in total phases around the outside. 16 of them are power stages, uh, 16 of them are for the, for the CPU and two are for the SOC, so the silicon on chip, so other stuff to do within the CPU and the memory and stuff. There's that extra slot that I said to you about for the M.2 extender. Now up, oh, we'll start up here, two eight pins up over here, then you've got first fan header, second fan header, third, there's another two hidden in there. I'm literally looking around for them, just for fans at the moment. There's another one there. Then one more, two there. And I believe that's all of the visible external ones, but don't forget, like I said, sorry, look, there and there. That's all the visible external ones, but it does come with that hub. So that gives you another six, eight. And then you also get the PWM uh, extensions and fan outs, and there's three on each of those. So loads and loads of uh, connectivity if you wanted it. Uh, up here, you can see that you've got your voltage readout points. Water block sensor, I've just spotted there for if you buy an aftermarket co-branded uh, water block. I think EK and Bits Power definitely do them. Got your poster reader up here for, uh, oh, they call it the Q code. And you can also see just there, they're your boot lights. So it will say like CPU, memory, GPU, and then post or boot. And then you have a start uh, button and a flex key button. There's no reset button, but that, that is a rad fan they're saying. And that one is a water pump fan. And then there are a couple of addressable RGB ports there. Normally they would be scattered up the top, so they've hidden them around the side and made it tidy. You've got a horizontal 24 pin, 
rather than the vertical. And then you do have an extra six pin slot here, which they are calling the PCIe power, should you need loads of it. A couple of USB 3s, you also get a couple. This is genuinely making my arm ache holding it. A couple of USB 3.2 Gen 2s for those of you out there that have got cases that might need to. Six SATAs. Uh, you've got the water cooling area down here. I am really struggling to hold this up. Uh, this is your front panel connectors. Water cooling section so you can power a water pump. Um, you can also have thermal probes there. Uh, actually, this would be to track the RPM. The other two are for your thermal probes. And then along here, we have safe boot, uh, retry button, and then the BIOS switch, slow mode, V latch button, couple of USB 2s, and then there is uh, an addressable RGB and a normal RGB. Oh my, I'm gonna have to put this down. I cannot stress enough how heavy that is. You're definitely gonna wanna make sure you uh, use all the screws on my days. Um, so underneath we know we've got M.2 here, there's an M.2 here as well. I don't think, oh, there is another M.2 at the top as well. So you've got one M.2 here, one M.2 here, one M.2 here, and you can put another two up there as well, so quite a lot. Then round the back of the board, you've got your BIOS switch here, clear CMOS, and this is so that you can do uh, um, BIOS flashback. In fact, I'm going to zoom you in so that you can have a better look rather than me standing there hogging it all. So you've got a display port in because this does support Thunderbolt. And there's another one. So you can see the two Thunderbolt ports there, look. So they're Thunderbolt outputs. So you can use those for Thunderbolt compatible displays. The uh, Ethernet, you do get a 10 GBE here. Now you do need to remember the 10 GBE. You're only going to get a boost there if you have a uh, router or a switch capable of more than one G um, Ethernet. Uh, so if you've, I've not seen any routers with 10 GBE yet. It's more of a switch thing. Uh, there are some routers now starting to come out with 2.5 gig uh, slots. So that's something to keep an eye on. And then a whole plethora of USB uh, 3.2A slots, I guess you can use the Thunderbolt ports as extra Cs if you need them. Then you've got gold plated audio outputs on the back there and they'll light up as well uh, so that if you're hunting around behind the system in the dark then you'll be able to work out what one's what. Something I have just noticed which I'll bring around there we go, you can see that the eight pins have got the Procore shields on and that makes me think that the 24 pin would, but it doesn't. I'm going to have to put this thing down. Oh my days. Like genuinely, genuinely, this thing weighs a ton. I am liking that crosshair lettering though. That's had a little bit of an update. That actually looks really, really pretty. So... Hmm. Now, because of a magic cable that I have, it does allow me to power up the board without a CPU in it so that we can see the lighting. So what we can see is we have a long lighting strip down here, which is hidden in between the board and the back plate. You can see that we do have an OLED panel here, which is flickering around uh, underneath the uh, CPU area. Now there is an M.2 underneath that as well, but these little places, you can assign them to give you certain information like CPU power, uh, uh, sorry, CPU temps, GPU temps, stuff like that. Uh, but then you've also got these RGB sections here and the ROG up the other side. If I spin it around, we can see there, that you can see the audio lighting as well. I can't make it any darker in here today. Uh, something that I have just noticed is hoping that the camera will pick it up, but there is a faint bit of detailing in the rock. So in the uh, layer behind, it's got like a bit of sparkle or something to it. It's not massively prominent to the naked eye. So I don't know whether the camera will pick it up accurately or not. I'm trying my best. But 
it is there. That's the best I can really say. It is very faint though. I think it would have probably been a bit better if it was just like a frosted uh, to match the actual chipset heatsink. Now, what we do need to do is realise that this just arrived today, so I've jumped on it so that I can give you an early look around. Because at the end of the day, this is the first time we've had a Crosshair Extreme. It's a big deal. They always stopped at the formula before. So people are finally getting the big top-end flight AMD board just as we're starting to talk about AM5. So it's like the last hurrah for Asus ROG and AM4. And we'll be testing this in the not too distant future. Don't know whether I'm gonna go 5900X or 5950X. 5900X is what I have tested all the other X570s uh, on. But what I might do is put the X59, sorry, the 5950X in it as well just so that we can do some extra VRM temperatures just so that we can get a better feel for it and that is it so from me and if you don't know him already Roggy <laughs> we're out let me know what you think also let me know if there's anything that you want to know for the uh, main review and I will try my best to let you know but for now at least from me and Roggy I'm out Thank <laughs> you.